welcome to the 103rd drive through review and today we are going to be talking about caveman curling. Um, this game is, what you do is you have this mat and you're pretty much a caveman and what you do is there are these little wooden circles and what you do is you flick them and you're trying to be the last player to get in the center of the fire pit and um, it I think it's a fun game so uh, well now my dad is going to tell you a little bit about the game. Okay, here's the board for Caveman Curling. You can see it's sort of this strange paper. It's not very flimsy, but it's not very thick either. It's really nice paper. And these discs that you're going to get are move along pretty good on it. Um, so it'll take a couple of flicks your first time, I think, to gauge how far the thing's going to go. Uh, but it seems to work really, really well. Uh, the object, like Timothy said, is to flick all of these uh, that you have one at a time. So if you've got a red player and a yellow player, you're going to flick these down and whoever has the most or even just one closest to the center there in the fire is going to score points. So if it ended up like this, maybe everything else was knocked off the board and there were just the two, the red player would score one point. So if red had two here, two closer than the yellow, they would get two points like so. So Timothy's actually going to show you how this board works. You can see, maybe or maybe not, at the end I've got a clip at the end. And on this side I don't have anything. So Timothy's going to show you actually how this is put together. So when you get the game, um, it's actually all rolled up in the box. And what you have to do is like that. And what happens is you get these weights like this. And see how it closes like that with magnets? Well, what you do is on the end, you kind of... Put one piece under and then clip it closed. Try to get it straight there. Mm -hmm. Like that. And uh, that's all it takes. Yeah, he's right. It's really amazing how flat this thing uh, works. You, we play this on the carpet, but we mainly play it on tables. But you can flick this anywhere. So if, if your kids wanted to play this like in their bedroom or whatever, they could just lay down on the floor and flick to their heart's content. So what you're trying to do is make it past this line when you flick it. And if you don't don't make it past that line or this line, which is kind of sad if you don't make it past that line, but still, because that's where you flick it from back here. And you can flick it anywhere from over here to over here. Um, you can flick it slanted. You can flick it anyway. Um, but still, like if you don't make it past this line right there, what happens is it immediately immediately gets taken off the board and you pretty much lose one and you don't get to use that one over uh, over again but one thing you can do is you can use these tools here so let's take for example let's say you flick this up here and it didn't quite make it you can take and use one of these tools place it adjacent to the piece and then you can move it to the other side hopefully you won't knock it like I just did but you take it there and then it use that tool now in the game uh, it says that you could use these maybe once per round, so you shoot all of your pieces, and then you can reset your tools. But we found that it's better to just use these once per game. The object is to get six points at the end of however many rounds it takes. So we found that after you play it a couple times, having all these tools available, it makes the game a little bit too easy. So we play that you can only use it once per round, uh, game, and then when you're done, you just flip them over and you know you've used that tool. So likewise here, if you wanted to get something closer in the middle, you've got two different tools that you can use here. You've got a longer one and a shorter one. So if I wanted to get this close to the middle like so, I could put that there, move that over, and then I would use that tool. Now one thing to keep in mind is you can't like go onto another uh, block. So if the red one was there, I couldn't like use that tool to try to get it over. It'd be blocking. I could go sideways if I wanted to for some reason. You've also got these. Um, there's one that looks like this, and then there's one that's a monkey. Um, yes, and so what happens, like, pretend I just flicked that, and I want it to stay there and be safe. So, like, say that my dad flicks his and knocks me out. What happens is if this hits the board, um, you can take yours and save it for the end, and you can re-flick it. Yeah, so that's an interesting way to sort of protect your good pieces. And now the rule is that you can only use one tool... Uh, per shot. So if I shot something and then used this tool to get it closer, then I couldn't use uh, this piece to sort of protect it. So each player gets six in their color, but then if you get this expansion here, which adds a sort of a third color, these black colors, uh, you also get these extra pieces here in the, each of the red and yellow colors, but they have a black base. 
And so these are actually worth two points. If you end up getting this one inside the middle there, this will actually count as two points. So remember that, you know, at the end of the round, you're going to get one point and then two points for these for each one that you have closer than your opponent. So it's feasible to win the game in one round if you somehow have all six in there. But usually it takes a few rounds to accomplish that. I will say that I don't particularly care for playing with this third player. It makes the board very crowded and it makes sort of a little bit more chaotic. Whereas if you have two players, you can kind of uh, do a little bit of strategy and sort of, you know, set up blockers. So if I had this guy in the middle, I could put these guys as blockers so that somebody else was coming to try to knock them away, they'd have less chance of knocking that away. Kind of like actual curling. So that's the game. It's very simple. Players just take turns shooting their little uh, rocks here. And, uh, and then you just play round by round until somebody gets six points. I just also wanted to show you the art on the board. So forgive me while I zoom in here. And on the board, there's all these sort of whimsical uh, little illustrations of cavemen just doing all kinds of different things, being chased by saber-toothed tigers. There's a whole bunch of these all throughout the board. Okay, hope you enjoyed that overview there. Uh, I actually quite like this game. I'm sort of a fan of curling in general. I live up here in the Northwest, so every four years when the Olympic comes around, uh, my brother and I, uh, we spend time chatting about it on the internet and watching it and dream of joining a curling club to get an Olympic medal one day. But anyway, we, we like watching it. So it's fun. It's like a poor man's crokinole if you've ever played that. Uh, I think the game costs like 20 bucks or whatever. Uh, I do have a question for Timothy though. Which game do you like better, this or Sorry Sliders? Honest answer. Um, I, I would actually say Caveman Curling. Really? Yeah. Not just because we're doing a review of it? Nope. Okay. We could do a, a review of Sorry Sliders and I'd say the same thing. Uh, you would say you like Caveman Curling better? Yep. Why do you like Caveman Curling better? It's a lot more fun. You get more pieces. And also, because <clears throat> in Sorry Sliders, you only get four pieces. Mm -hmm. In this, you get six. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's pretty fun, and you also get tools in this to help mm -hmm. you get forward. Yeah. And in the other one, you can actually extend your track to yeah. make it so it's harder. Yeah. And you can't usually make it as far. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's cool thing about Sorry Sliders is you can change the track. This track's always the same. But this one, I think he's right. I think I like this better than Sorry Sliders. Um, you can be a little bit more tactical and strategic and block and do things like that. Where Sorry Sliders, you don't have that much control. So this is a lot more of a controlled game and it makes it more fun. And you bring in some more of the mental aspect as long as the physical dexterity aspect. But they both flick. They both flick. They both flick. But, but you can also do this with both of them. Yeah, you can kind of do the push thing, you know, instead of just a, a punch with your finger. Yeah, and you can also flick it like this. That's right. Anything else you want to say about this one? Um, yeah, uh, I really suggest this game. It's good for kids, and, like, if you have other family members that ever come over, like, parents or grandpa and grandpa, mm -hmm. um, that you can also play it with them. And if they have trouble flicking it like this, it hurts their nail or something, then just have them flick it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do teams or two-on-two. Two. And the third player's nice is you got, like, an odd number of people. I just prefer it without the third because it's just more crowded and chaotic. And once we actually played with four people, um, but right. so we had two people on a team. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thanks a lot. Uh, see you next time.